for God or for tyranny. Uh, you can get all of his books, all of his material, find out about Ted and his dad, Walid, at shubat.com. That's a shoe, as in shoe that you wear on your foot, S H O E. Bot, as in an, as in a bat, shoe bot, shoe bot, S H O E B A T dot com. Ted, welcome to Freedom Friday, or welcome back to Freedom Friday. It's good to be on again, sir. How are you? I'm doing wonderful, and it's and and thank you for honoring us with your presence. I know our audience loves you and loves your dad and the insight that you bring to the show. Uh, well, first of all. Um, Tell us just a little bit about what you and your dad and and folks around you are 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 thinking about what's going on in the Middle East, just generally, but particularly now with uh, what's going on with Syria and Obama and uh, weapons purchases and weapons supplying and how that could trickle down uh, to us. Well, the Middle East is gradually now well not well very very quickly, but at the same time, there's a gradual shift in the culture taking place right now, and it is turning back to original Islam. You have to understand, in World War I, after the Ottoman Empire was finally crushed by the British, Islamic fundamentalism went to sleep for a while. Right. Now with these revolutions taking place and these dictators being ousted, Islamic fundamentalism is now finally awakening. So right now we're seeing the awakening stage. A, a dictator such as Saddam Hussein, Gaddafi, Mubarak, and also Hafez al-Assad and his son who is in power in Syria right now, Bashar al-Assad, all of these dictators, they were uh, uh, suppressing Islamic fundamentalism in a very extreme and strict manner. And it was absolutely necessary. And if you don't understand the Middle East, uh, you won't understand why they were so brutal. They had to be brutal to suppress the Islamic fundamentalist uh, groups from arising and taking over the country. Well, now that we have supported the ousting of these dictatorships, for example, Bush helping taking out, uh, help, helping take out Saddam Hussein. Now uh, the Obama administration was in support of the revolution in Egypt, in support of the revolution in Libya. Now it's supporting the revolution in Syria. This is uh, this is bringing the Middle East into a very detrimental situation, especially for Israel, because Israel now has to deal with a Muslim Brotherhood Egypt and a Hamas Gaza. They have to deal with a Hezbollah Lebanon, and now they have to deal with, or they're going to be dealing with in a very great deal, a Muslim Brotherhood Syria. Yeah. Because uh, the rebels are, have, are becoming very, very powerful. They have taken over the majority of the villages bordering on the Golan Heights, so the frontiers of, of Israel are in, are in great danger. If Syria, that is, becomes uh, uh, a Muslim Brotherhood country and Bashar al-Assad is gone, which I believe it will happen eventually, and America is supporting it. How so? Because America, in 2011, sold over $33 billion worth of weapons to Saudi Arabia, another $1.7 billion uh, 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 of weaponry to uh, Qatar and South Arabia. The Arabs, in turn, transplanted these weapons into Syria. All of these weapons got into the hands of jihadists. Yeah. Uh, and, and, so, and, 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 yeah. And doesn't Syria more than likely have some of Saddam Hussein's uh, weapons? Weren't they? Weren't well, some a, of, I don't know anything about that, so I can't comment. Okay. Uh, but what I will say is that uh, before Ambassador Chris, Christopher Stevens was murdered, he was working with uh, Al Qaeda cell groups in Libya. Mm -hmm. This has now been confirmed. Business Business Insider wrote a very good article on this. Anybody can go check this out. Uh, Stevens was working with the Libyans and giving them weapons. After Gaddafi was ousted, those weapons were seized by the Obama administration, by Ambassador Stevens and John, John Brennan. The weapons were trans were transferred to Turkey, and the Turks gave those weapons to the Syrians. The amount of weapons that were transferred from North Africa to Turkey and from Turkey to Syria was about 400 tons of weapons. We're talking serious weaponry. Yeah. We're talking anti-aircraft weapons. Um, and, and, and now because of the work of Stevens, because of the work of Brennan, the Free Syrian Army, which is the main opposition group, is now the most powerful jihadist organization in the Middle East. The, sad, the only sad part about what happened in Benghazi was not the death of Stevens. It was the fact that three American soldiers, three Americans, lost their lives in defense of a corrupt politician. Yeah. 
And the Obama administration here wants to get rid of the Second Amendment. He wants to get rid of our semi-automatic weapons. Then why is the Obama administration helping ship semi-automatic weapons, rifles, and grenades to the Syrians? Right. Why do the Syrians need semi-automatic weapons, but we don't need semi-automatic weapons? That's right. That is the main question. No, that's, that, that, that's, that's a wonderful question to ask. And, and again, I'm just going to throw this in, but I'm going to keep letting you go. Why does the Department of Homeland Security need targets of white pregnant women, white little girl on a playground, a white little boy, and a white farmer holding a shotgun? Uh, why does the DHS need that? What are they preparing for? Right. And let me add to that. Why, why does the government need so many tons of ammunition that they have been buying recently? Yeah. Two billion rounds, yeah. enough to fight a 25-year war at uh, Gulf War uh, levels. That's right. That's right. And the reason I believe, I believe there's, there's, there's two possibilities here, and they both can be true at the same time. It's one, firstly, that the government knows there's going to be huge amounts of disobedience amongst the populace, that they will have to use deadly force to suppress it mm -hmm. and or so this this, this could be uh, also happening is that the government wants to create a major police state in this country mm -hmm. both of these things I will not doubt knowing how corrupt this government is right uh, so both and, and here's another thing I want to add the Obama administration has been greatly supporting not just Syria but also the na the, ne the now terrorist state of Egypt which is being ran by the Muslim Brotherhood what is being taught to high school students in Egypt, you ask yourself? They are now being taught. This is just recent, as, as, of, as of February. They are now being taught in the new high school curriculum of Egypt to kill anybody who leaves the religion of Islam and eat his flesh, God. as long as you don't grill or cook it. This is not something I made up. This is not a conspiracy theory. Whoever wants to see the evidence that I have for this, they can go to my uh, article, Islam and Cannibalism, which I wrote last month. Uh, it, is, it is in the Al-Azhar University curriculum. It is being taught in the textbooks for high school students. And it is a completely authoritative because uh, Al-Shafi'i, who is one of the major scholars of Islam, he was the one who organized what we today call Sharia law. He wrote that it is okay for a Muslim to kill any enemy of Islam and eat his flesh, just right. as long as you don't grill and cook it. Yeah. You know, I read your People article. People are shocked by this. I, I know. They I say, well, this is not part of Islam. Yeah. What they don't understand is that this is part of original Islam, the pure Islam of the Prophet Muhammad in, Saudi Arabia, in ancient Arabia. Mm -hmm. What we're seeing now is a shift in the Middle East, a gradual shift that is taking place right now amongst the younger generation to go back to the original form of Islam. Because the older generation in the Middle East, yeah, they're fundamentalists, but they're still halfway between Western influence and Islamic fundamentalism. Right. The new generation, the teenagers, their minds are still sponges, easily to, to be taken advantage of. Right. right now they are being flooded with original Islam. And once these guys grow up, once they thrive in the region, once they be begin to govern and rule and dominate the region, you are going to see a new form of Islam, which we have never seen before, and it's going to be something akin to the Night of the Living Dead. Right. Yeah, listen, I, I, I'm with you. I've been screaming this and shouting this for years. Uh, before Obama went in office, I begged people to pay attention to this. I, 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 we've outlined Obama's connection to all of this. Uh, I did not know that he would bring about what he brought about in the Middle East with Egypt and Libya, although we made some predictions uh, that things like that would happen. And uh, I even made a video about it, and now we're living it. So you're, you're right. These are very uh, phetic and biblical times we're living in, aren't they, Ted? I believe so. If you read the book of Maccabees, mm -hmm. if you read the first book of Maccabees, there is a part of that histor great historical event in Israel's history in which Judas Maccabeus sent a messenger to inquire on the enemy, how many numbers they have, how strong they are, etc. The messenger returned back to Judas Maccabeus and he said, the enemy is coming, and they are not just from the army of Antiochus Epiphanes, but they are fr the, the enemy is coming from all the surrounding nations around Israel. This is in the first book of Maccabees. Right. The surrounding nations. So right now we have uh, Hezbollah, Lebanon. We have Hamas in Gaza. We have now the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. We have uh, 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 Syria going plunging into the hands of the Muslim Brotherhood. Another nation that we need to look out for is not just Syria. 
we need to be also looking out for the Muslim Brotherhood in Jordan. The nation of Jordan is a big focus. Should be uh, it should be our big focus, but it's not. Since 2011, the Muslim Brotherhood has increased the momentum on taking over the government of Jordan, which is now under the monarchy of King Abdullah. Right. The Muslim Brotherhood is working ever so hard to do this, and now the Muslim Brotherhood is the most powerful and most well organized political party in Jordan. So they yeah. are not yeah. something to be neglected. Yeah, and, and not a frivolous claim. Yeah, no, and we got to take a break. But listen, they're the most powerful uh, force to be reckoned with. And I'm going to say this because of this current U.S. administration. And I tried to tell you so, folks. I tried to tell you that this was coming. And here we are. And now we have Ted Shubat giving us the inner workings of it. Listen, we were talking about this alignment of nations coming against uh, Israel in the last days. And you were quoting some of the works of uh, the book of Maccabees. And, and I want to tell our listeners, Ezekiel 38 and 39 uh, speak specifically about this. Ezekiel gave that prophecy some 26, 2700 years ago that in the very last days, Israel would be restored to its land, restored to its borders, and it then would be surrounded by nations that would align themselves and conspire against them. And the book of Ezekiel gives the listing of the nations from the old table of uh, nations from Genesis 10, and it lines directly up with the nations now that are conspiring and aligning, uh, Ted. And so, so we've got, we're living in prophetic times. Now Syria is becoming a major player, but isn't Iran connected to Syria right now? I mean, have, or don't they have an alliance? It, they, absolutely, they do. The difference between, though, between Bashar al-Assad and uh, Ahmadinejad is that Ahmadinejad believes in Shi'i supremacy. Right. In that if you're in Iran, if you're a, and you're a Sunni Muslim, a Sunni Muslim is someone who believes that Muhammad, uh, the successor of Muhammad right. should have been Abu Bakr. It's very complicated. I won't get into this yeah. now. Yeah, I've explained but, it before. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, okay, good, good, good. good. Yeah, that's good. Uh, but if you're, if you're a Sunni and you go to Iran, they'll arrest you when they kill you. Right. In Syria... Under Bashar al-Assad, the, the Syrian, the Shia, the Sunni were protected uh, collectively. They were protected uh, altogether. And not just that, the Christians were also he greatly pro protected in Syria under Bashar al-Assad. And also the Jews under Bashar al-Assad were protected. Yes, the Jews, the smallest minority in the country, there's around 200 still living. They're a very ancient community. And Bashar al-Assad has been protecting them. In fact, just last year, they built a new synagogue in Damascus. So there is a, they are allies. And I'm not saying that Bashar al-Assad is good. I think he's evil. But the rebels are a lot worse. Between the rebels and Bashar al-Assad, I will choose Assad any day. Any yeah. day. Just like I would choose Saddam Hussein over the Islamic fundamentalists and the jihadists, which are overrunning Iraq right now. Yes, listen. Uh, just, that's the way the Middle East works. Yes, it does. And I've had good friends on my program who live in Israel in the Middle East. I've had them come on as expert advisors. And back during the Arab Spring, they were saying, look, we'll take Mubarak any day over the Muslim Brotherhood. We'll take, right. uh, what's the dude, Gaddafi, any day yeah, over the Gaddafi, Muslim Brotherhood. Right. Yeah, and, and, and of course I had, you know, uh, typical Americans who don't understand this, they were calling up saying, what, that's ridiculous. We need to get rid of Mubarak. We need to get rid of Gaddafi. Right. And our Israeli friends were saying, no, don't do this to us. You will destroy us. And of course, right. this administration did it to them, and now we have Muslim Brotherhood raining down its terror. And tell us the connection between Muslim Brotherhood and Nazism in Egypt, and what's going on there. Well, well, for one thing, you have uh, you have Qaradawi, who is the who is um, the major intellect for the Muslim Brotherhood right now. He is a Hitler sympathizer. He said that that he hopes for one day that the Muslims will do to the Jews what Hitler did. The only difference is that we will finish the job that Hitler started. Right. Uh, so they are. This is a Nazi sympathizing organization for one. And right now, what we're seeing is is a systematic, uh, a, a systematic uh, methods used by the Egyptian government right now to suppress Christian rights. Which which the this suppression. For example, a church can't be built in certain areas. Bibles can't be read. If a Christian converts to Islam, he gets thrown in prison. If a, if a church, a pastor, for example, preaches out against the government, he can be executed or thrown in prison or tortured or all three, all the above. All of these, uh, all of these uh, despotic uh, ways of governing, all of these things, they are foreshadowing a coming s slaughter. 